What's up, everybody? I watched Weird, the Al Yankovic story over the weekend, and this one might be relatively short because this is one of my favorite movies of the year, I'm sure. First of all, I really like that they went the route that they did. I mean, a traditional standard, just sort of playing it straight biopic about an artist like Al Yankovic just would have felt wrong. So doing it in a matter that is almost completely fictionalized and even in a way sort of pokes fun at the liberties that some biopics take with their storytelling, that is all just totally appropriate here. And even then, it could have very easily been a very cynical one joke sort of spoof, but the screenplay that Yankovic co-wrote with Eric Appel, just like Yankovic's music, it aims for sweetness rather than snark. Like it's a very affectionate form of spoofing. It's a little bit like you can obviously tell that when you watch Austin Powers, Mike Myers deeply and sincerely loves those old James Bond movies and those old spy movies from the 70s, like Our Man Flint and all that jazz, right? And it's the same thing here. Al Yankovic is clearly someone who has always just had a deep, sincere, unbridled love of music, period. I'm not gonna list them all here, but the casting is spot on across the board. It did take me a half a second to recognize Evan Rachel Wood as Madonna. That might have been a little bit off, but then again, you have to remember, I'm really not much of a Madonnaologist, like, at all. Don't have anything against Madonna, but I just never got plugged into her wavelength. So I'm probably the wrong person to be nitpicking over accuracy or lack thereof when it comes to her. Part of me does kind of wish that they had gone the same way that they did with the Private Parts biopic about Howard Stern, where they had um, Howard Stern playing himself all the way from when he was a kid to an adult, which, yeah, it looks ridiculous. But again, it was part of that movie's charm. And I feel like that could have worked to the same effect here if it had just been Yankovic playing himself from, you know, being a small child to now. I mean, in fact, like the more I think about it, seeing him playing a tyke version of himself probably would have been quite hilarious. But having said that, if they did have to go a different route and cast someone else, they absolutely found the right guy for the job. And I wouldn't have on paper said that Daniel Radcliffe was my first choice, but I can't picture anyone else playing this version of Yankovic as depicted in the movie. So this is just further proof for me that you always have to be humble and wait until you actually see the performance. Radcliffe just seems like he's having a blast in this, and it's a great showcase for him because aside from some of the opening segments, I don't think there's very many scenes in the movie that don't feature Daniel Radcliffe or have him as the central focus of that scene. So he's carrying his whole thing on his shoulders and he manages to do it without ever feeling the least bit self-conscious. His performance is unimpeachable pretty much all the way through, but if I had to pick a single individual moment that I really enjoyed with this version of Al, it's the point where they're coming off stage after they've performed Amish Paradise and he peels his fake mustache that he would have worn for the role back onto his face. Like it's clean shaven there and he just does a little and the mustache comes back. It's just, oh my God. It's one of those little things like Bill not being able to wipe the fake blood off Uma's face in the opening scene of Kill Bill where you might not catch it right at first. It's, but it's just one of those subtle little in-jokes that, you know, kind of makes you chuckle and warms your heart a bit and doesn't draw deliberate attention to itself either. Now, because the movie is so clearly deliberately fictional and surreal in its depiction of his life, discussing the details and how it measures up to what really happened doesn't really seem to matter to me too much. Let's just agree that this isn't the movie for you if you like your biopics to be played straight. This movie is for the fans or anyone else who grew up watching or listening to Weird Al, and it is quite unapologetically geared towards that niche. Although I will say, amidst all the goopiness, the movie does find ways to kind of touch on why Weird Al is so culturally significant for a certain generation, at least enough so that if you were a newbie, you might kind of get the picture. The answer to whether or not you want to see this movie is probably also the answer to whether or not you are going to like it. And that's not the movie's flaw, that's just its strategy. Now, having said that, the movie does have a couple of small flaws for me. One being, as I already sort of touched on, that I didn't really care for Evan Rachel Wood as Madonna all that much. Hers was the one performance that I could really feel the ears being put on. You know, I mean, this whole thing is a spoof, I know. But again, it's generally being spoofed with a very sort of infectious sweetness. And she's the one person in the middle of all this that to me just comes across as being very sort of like cynical and dismissive of what she's doing. Maybe that's not the intention, 
or maybe it's the way she was directed, I don't know, but that's just how it came off to me, what can I say? And the only other small nitpick I have is that at an hour and 45 minutes, I feel like this could just be maybe 10 or 15 too long. For the most part, the high energy pitch is very well sustained, but there was a short but brief segment in the middle where I felt the momentum starting to lag a little bit. Mostly again, unfortunately, I'm sorry, you know, Madonna fans, blast me down in the comments if you want. When it got into the nitty gritty of his relationship with her, that's when the things start to falter just a little bit. So if they had trimmed that aspect of the movie somewhat, I think it still would have functioned just as well. But the back stretch of the movie, like the third act, it really finds its energy and its pace again. And the movie as a whole just has such an enchanting sweetness to it that I think I can forgive a little bit of lag. And honestly, upon rewatch, it wouldn't surprise me if that lag bothers me a little bit less, or if for that matter, if the material around Madonna and even Rachel Wood starts to make more sense to me at that point. This movie also fits in very nicely with a trend that I've experienced in 2022, which is that I find myself just constantly falling in love with movies that are made with such irrepressible joy and abandon and disregard for realism or credibility that it explodes off the screen and just absolutely wins my heart. Like it just ties my heart to it with a permanent knot, man. This year I've seen movies like Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, and now this just, you know, gleefully toss aside any sense of realism or subtlety in favor of just giving us good old school big screen pizzazz and love for the movies. In fact, watching this movie in a packed theater full of crazy weird Al fans would be the ideal way to see it, but that's not what I got alas, so I'm not gonna complain. So yeah, this movie is exactly and everything that I hoped it would be. And just like his early 89 movie UHF, this does actually make me kind of curious as to what Yankovic could accomplish as a screenwriter if he ever chose to apply himself to that a little bit more. This is the kind of movie that, especially with the weather turning, is great if you just want to get together with a few friends or even your partner, just make some hot chocolate, some buttered popcorn, get warm with a blanket, and just enjoy some genuine feel-good energy. This is absolutely one of my favorite movies of the year, and I completely recommend checking it out. And I mean, it's available to watch free on the Roku channel, so really, you got no excuse. Give it a go. Okay, brothers and sisters, thanks as ever for watching, and I will catch you again real soon.